It will be Cole Frilling taking the tip today for Case Western Reserve. So the first time in his career he'll take the tip off. Let's go, East. And he'll be going against Ethan Miller who wins the tip and sends it back to the point guard Colin McNeil and we are underway at Horsburg Gymnasium. Work to the inside, Suddeth. Back to the outside now, McNeil. McNeil working his way in, lays up. No good, rebound pulled down by Volkening and let's see if the pace picks up from here. Volkening will settle in in the half court. To the near wing, that's Ionati. Ionati looking to work it in. Into Frilling, Frilling turns, takes a step back and puts it in. And so the first year Cole Frilling immediately able to knock one down. Two to nothing, Case Western Reserve. And the early lead here for the Spartans, two zip. Work to the inside and a foul will be called there as Ethan Miller tried to take it into the hoop and he's fouled on the play. Foul's gonna go against Volkening and that'll send Miller to the line to try to shoot two and even up the score. Eddie, you can see early on here, size differential between the two teams could be a factor certainly weighing in Carnegie Mellon's favor. You'll see uh, them attack Cole if he's playing at the five. He's only 6'5 down there in the paint. Uh, so we'll see if they can take advantage of that matchup down low. Second one on the way. And that's good as well. So Miller knocks down both free throws and evens the score. Really not even just a height advantage, but physical size. You can see the just much bigger players oh, yeah, down low for Carnegie Mellon. Definitely, especially as Case Western Reserve is more of a three shooting team. They're gonna be a little longer. Uh, on the wings. There's one of those three-point shots from the wings right on Q. Eddie. Missed though by Ionati. And McNeil comes down with the board. Quickly up court, the lane is up and good. Knocked down by Howard. And so Carnegie Mellon takes the lead, four to two. Volkening along the outside. Hansen launches a three in and out. Fighting for the rebound is Hollis, but no foul called as it roll, rolls loose. And McNeil comes away with it, and Hollis deflects hey, the pass out of bounds. Good, good job by Hollis there to get back on defense and prevent an easy fast break point there for the Tartans. So Carnegie Mellon will inbound here. 24 on the shot clock, 18-23 to play in the first half of the game. Miller gives up to the top. That's Weiss. Weiss trying to work his way in, finds Suddeth. Suddeth now, back to the top. This is Miller for three, no good. Long rebound, tipped away and out of bounds. Possession back to the Spartans as Ionati watches it go out of play. 4-2 lead for Carnegie Mellon in the early going here. Hollis gets it in the backcourt to Volkening who will slow things down a shade. This is Hollis now at the top of the key. Passes it off near wing, Hansen. To the inside, Hollis looking to back down his man, working against Weiss, kicks it out. Nice stutter step from Ionati, who tries to make a cross-court pass looking for Hansen, but it's deflected away. That pass now deflected. Ionati comes away with that one. So a couple of turnovers back-to-back -back there, and the Spartans get possession back. A little bit of an aggressive move there by Volkening, and he's fouled on the play. As McNeil tries to go for the ball, let's take another look. Yep. I think McNeil just kind of got caught up there. It's a quick move by Volkening, and not much for McNeil to do on that play. Frilling trying to work his way in, and it gets knocked aside. And that's an offensive foul. That's Volkening there on both ends drawing fouls, one on the offensive end, one on the defensive end here uh, drawing that charge. And you can see Volkening said outside the restricted zone there. And so Howarth gets called for the foul. So still a two point game, four to the score. A little bit of a slow start for each of the two teams. Volkening on the outside, giving a little bit of space, passes off instead. Frilling passes into Hollis. Hollis, a size mismatch there, works his way in, but can't hit the turnaround hook. And a whistle blows, foul will be called. And it will go against Frilling. Let's see if we can take another look at this. This will be the hook shot here 
by Hollis as he tried to work his way in. Well, not much contact there, but maybe just enough to trip up Howarth there. Howarth now controls on the far wing, gives back up top. Weiss now passes off to McNeil. McNeil working against Iannotti. Stops and gives to Miller. Ethan Miller now back to the top. Ten on the shot clock. Howarth trying to work his way in against Frilling. Frilling has to be careful here with the fouls as that one no good. Good defense there by Frilling and again was able to do it without getting called for the foul. This is Hollis. Defense collapses on him so he kicks it back out and the Spartans will reset with 20 on the shot clock. Nice pass in. Frilling turnaround jumper no good. Hollis has it. Put back no good. Miller might have gotten a piece of that one. Head fake on the three attempt there by Sudeth. And that one knocked away. Three-pointer that time is up, no good. Miller, who's played well, gets the rebound, puts it back, and that's no good. Well, both teams struggling a little early on. Each team has made just one shot from the floor early on here. Hollis. Kicks it out, far side, Hansen with it. Hansen looking to work his way in. That's Volkening with eight on the shot clock. Volkening dribbling in, kicks out, open three for Frilling. Yes, that's good. And Frilling gives the Spartans the lead back. He scored all five for Case Western Reserve here. Five, four, Case Western Reserve on top. Got to get our first substitutions of the game. It's a good backdoor cut there, but well defended by Volkening. Layup was no good by Howarth. Sparns looking to answer now as they come down court. This is Volkening, comes near side to Hollis. Hollis looking to work his way in. Backing down his defender, kicks out to Frilling, but the shot no good. Short jumper there, but unable to knock it down. 5-4 still the score, Spartans leading. Ball loose underneath, and a block there by Frilling, but he'll get called for the foul. And that will be costly as it's now his second foul. Oh no, pardon me, they call it on Volkening instead. Yep, on the front end there. You can see looking back at it, Volkening came in from the other side of the hoop on the help defense and draws his first foul. Pardon me, his second. So Volkening is gonna have to check out. We'll see Robert Fowler come into the game for him. Sam Hansen will also come out and Ryan Newton in. And you can see the strategy being played here a little bit by Coach McGinnis where Carnegie Mellon pulls some of their bigger players out. All of a sudden now Newton's going to come in and the Spartans matching up with a larger lineup. Free throw no good and it's 5-5. Possession stays with the Spartans. And if you're just tuning in, the Case Western Reserve women with a 27-point win over Carnegie Mellon earlier today. The men trying to follow suit and pick up the victory. That's Fowler, kick out, Iannotti, step back three on the way, it's good. Iannotti does that about as well as anybody where he hesitates on the three as the layup on the other end, good. Ethan Miller scores again, but he does that about as well as anyone where he takes that step back and is able to launch that three while the defender flies past him. To the outside, Iannotti. Nice move in, and that's good. Back-to-back that -back that, baskets for Iannotti. The reason that that step back works really well is because he can drive into the lane like that and make an easy layup. So the defender's got to you know, guard for both there. 10-7 Spartans. That's Joey Krimpa. Who kicked it out now driving in and getting the layup is Zach Watson, although he missed it. And the Spartans with the rebound. Ryan Newton came away with that one. Hi, Naughty, right in front of us here at the scorer's table. Hi, everybody. Hi, Naughty has scored five straight for Case Western Reserve. Kicks off here to Hollis, who wants a three. No good, long rebound. Sudden, they will pull that one in. Far wing now, three-pointer, no good. That time it was Nick Sikassian who launched it, unable to knock it down. 
Three-pointer again by Iannotti, in and out. A little bit of an off-balance shot there for Iannotti. He can knock those down. Never an easy shot to take. Cassian kicks out. Watson, and Watson's pass to no one in particular. A little bit of a miscommunication there. He had uh, somebody cutting into the basket, and he thought he was going to stay up at the at top of the yard. The Spartans now will make a substitution. Connor Peterson into the game, and this will be just his second game played this season. So let's see if Peterson can make an impact here. Interesting. Frilling, pass off to the far side. This is Peterson, back out. Faller, Peterson has a chance, wants the three, and it's good. Connor Peterson making the most of his minutes so far in this game, knocks down a three fresh off the bench. Making Coach McGinnis look good right there. He's just been slow playing that one all season. <laughs> Now driving in, layup is up, no good, and there's a rebound for Peterson. You know, sometimes you could get a guy and maximize his minutes when he knows that those are valuable minutes on the court for him. If Peterson is going to play more time this season, he's got to make the most when he's out there. Right. And now with the uh, Volkening's in a little bit of foul trouble, he's on the bench right now, so, you know. Without Matthew Leonis as well. This right. Yeah. Peterson again, finger roll off the front of the rim, no good. Heat check there, I think, a little bit for Peterson. <laughs> Three-pointer, no good. Frilling deflects that one. Great job on the offensive rebound by Frilling. Now from the near wing, Frilling gonna try to cut in, instead kicks it out. Newton with it, driving to the hoop. The lane is up and good. Ryan Newton off the bench getting that one to fall. 15 to seven and the Spartans really starting to rally here. Yeah, they're playing a little bit more up-tempo at the beginning of the game. They were you know, kind of sh shutting down when they got in their half court, 13, playing more of their style. 13 to three run for the Spartans. The outside three-pointer Miller, and he continues to really hurt this Case Western Reserve team. Miller has played well today. He has eight of his team's 10, and that cuts it back to a five-point game. Miller averaging 13 on the year. He can hit from inside and from out. Showing his range there. This is Newton, kicked out, Faller. Faller, nice pass off to Frilling, backtracking as he takes the jumper and puts it in. And a really good pass there from Faller. So Frilling has started off his day well. Seven for him. There he is with a block right there. And now let's see if he can answer as he comes down the court quickly. Frilling driving in, kicked out and a little bit haphazard there as it goes past Fowler. Maybe a case trying to do a little bit too much there. Some more substitutions here as it looks like the starting backcourt back into the game for Carnegie Mellon. Colin McNeil and Zach Holworth check back in. The Spartans. We had Hollis come in for Frilling there. So it'll be Iannotti, Hollis, Newton, Peterson, and Faller out there for Case Western Reserve. McNeil, Suddeth, Howarth, Weiss, and Nikassian in. Jumper there, knocked down by Sudet. Seventeen to twelve, five point Case Western Reserve lead about halfway through the half. And a three pointer there, effortless there by Robert Faller. Twenty to twelve the score. Faller becoming a real weapon for Case Western Reserve. Good size can shoot, and you see there he gets a big rebound as well. This is Hollis. Hollis out to Peterson, and Peterson will be called for the travel. Hansen checks into the game, and that'll give Iannotti his first breather of the day. Celtic. Again, sometimes Celtic. what we were talking about earlier, Eddie, works both ways. Sometimes you come in and you can try to make the most of your minutes. Sometimes you can do a little bit too much, and I think after the hot start, Peterson may be a little bit too much right now. Can't let the moment get the best of him here, playing some valuable minutes uh, for Coach McGinnis' squad. To the outside. Howard, pardon me, that was Cassian. Back to Suddeth. 
Suddeth works it in to McNeil, who lays it in. Good job there with the time running out on the shot clock. 20 to 14, six point case, Western Reserve lead 11 minutes into the game. Newton backs his way in, and that's good, and I believe we're gonna get a flop warning called there. Yeah. We're gonna look at it here. So, yeah, that's a clear flop there by McNeil, and that's called now a point of emphasis this season with the referees on those flops. It goes to the delay of game warning. If another one happens, it becomes a free throw. Yeah, and that's one warning per team, not per player. Correct. On the outside, three-pointer on the way by Weiss, no good. Rebound, though, on the offensive end. And a travel called against McNeil to try to lay it in. And get another look at that one. Yeah, you, maybe with that back foot kind of reset it. Yeah, it looks like they, maybe they got him for going up uh, before he can shoot it there. It's one of those where uh, in the NBA that maybe counts as half a step, but that's going to get <laughs> called in the college game. Newton on the inside, trying to work his way in. Nice move, and Elaine is good. A lot of energy off the bench today for Ryan Newton, who has his team up by 10, 24-14, early lead here for Case Western Reserve. And that's two straight possessions where they fed Newton in the block, and he uh, delivered. And a foul will be called on the back end there, and that will be on Fowler. Fowler tried to make sure that one was called against him there. See some members of the Case Western Reserve women's basketball team taking in the men's game here. Nice win today for the Spartan women earlier. Well-deserved rest heading into uh, the beginning of the tough UAA schedule. Mm -hmm. Reminder, we'll be joined at halftime by the second-best-dressed second best man in the building today, Todd McGinnis, who will recap the first half with us for his team. That's a foul call there. And then after that, make sure to stay tuned. Case Western Reserve University Athletic Director Amy Backus will be joining us as well, and she'll tell us about the goings-on at the Spartan Athletic Program. 10-point lead for Case Western Reserve. As Holworth knocks down his first of two free throws. Holworth is shooting 68.4% entering today's game. Second one is good. Hollis. Into Newton. He's had some success on the interior today. They'll match him up with a bigger presence in Suddeth defending him. Now, Newton, he lays it in. Boy, some real skill around the rim here for Ryan Newton, who's looked good today. That's yeah, and then eight. on that bigger defender right there, getting it up and over him. And another rebound there for Hollis. It's what Newton can do for you out there because he's so skilled underneath the hoop, he can match up against a bigger defender and get points. As Frilling lets the three go, and that's good. And that one, a block from behind, and they will call a foul on the play, though, against Fowler. So Fowler called for his second foul on that one. You take another look at that. Looked like they got him on the reach on the or on the waist there. Yep. The block was clean. Joey Kremp at the line knocks down the first one. One more look at that. Let's see. Michael, Mike, Michael, timeout. Mm. No. On the make. Yeah, that looked clean on the replay. It's so hard to judge in the moment, and you see more often than not. Refs, especially when a player gets above the other player, like Fowler did there, they will err on the side of caution and issue the foul on those. 
We'll get a 30-second timeout here. It's the Spartans with an 11-point lead with 7.09 remaining, but we'll keep it here on air with you. Eddie, a really good start to this one for the Spartans. You can't ask for better than what they've gotten with an 11-point lead over Carnegie Mellon. Yeah, they responded really well. Beginning of the game, they weren't shooting well, and uh, they seemed to pick up the pace as the first half started going on and picked up a really uh, good early lead here against the Tartans. A little bit similar to what the women uh, faced earlier here uh, at Horsburg Gymnasium. You know, for Case West Reserve right now, key number to look at is the disparity in bench points. 14 points off the bench for the Spartans compared to just two for Carnegie Mellon. That's been a big difference so far in this one. 10 points for Cole Frilling in his first career start, and then eight for Ryan Newton. It's just been a really good day for the Case Western Reserve big men so far. They have 18 of the team's 29 points combined. Hollis along the outside. Frilling doing a good job to corral that one. Works it into Newton. Newton again against Suttis. Step back jumper, no good. And that's one where you'd rather, I think, see Newton go straight at the rim there rather than take that step back. Good pass off by McNeil. A block on the shot, though, in case Western Reserve with the rebound. That's Hollis who picks it up. Faller comes in. Frilling, three-pointer, no good. And maybe that's a case of both Frilling and Newton getting a little bit too greedy on the offensive end. Move, Dan, move, Daniel. 11-point lead for the Spartans. Three-pointer on the way, and that's good. Zach Holworth knocks it down. And that will take a bite out of that lead, get it back to single digits. 29-21 Spartans ahead in this one. Newton, Faller for three. Yes. Robert Faller having a really nice game today. That's his second three of the day. He has six points. Eddie, that penetration for Case Western Reserve as a foul will be called there. The penetration for Case Western Reserve starting to show some benefits as they're getting some open looks on the outside now. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's been really impressive, especially against a much bigger lineup here at Carnegie Mellon, of them being able to get inside and get those uh, easy layups so that they can open up the wings for three-pointers. That foul was called on Hollis, his first, as McNeil misses the front end of two. It'll be interesting to see uh, how Case Western defends against Carnegie Mellon here for the rest of the first half. They already are in the bonus with seven fouls. They have held the Tartans to under 30% shooting, uh, but maybe it's because they've been so aggressive on the defensive end. Second free throw no good as well for McNeil. McNeil only a 50% shooter coming into the game. So he has struggled from the line this year. Match up, mismatch down low is Hollis being defended by McNeil. Hollis takes it, backs his way in. Got a little turned around under the hoop, forced to kick it out. This is Hanson who launches a long three, front of the rim, no good. And Suddeth pulls down the rebound. And a little wild there. Ball comes loose, Holworth doing a good job to keep possession. A little haphazard right now, but Miller ends up with it, launches the three. That one no good, and Hollis pulls down the board. Ayanati. Falconing now will hold, back to Hansen. 15 on the shot clock, this is Ayanati. Tries to work it across to Frilling, launches a three, in and out, no good. That one would have been an exclamation point. Spartans up 11, 32-21, under five minutes left in the opening half. Holworth trying to work his way in. Ayanati might have gotten a piece of that. Holworth gets the rebound, goes back up strong and lays it in. And a timeout called by Case Western Reserve. It'll be a full timeout. Spartans up nine. We'll take a break here. The Spartans of the full timeout. Inspired by the 60s, Dave's Cosmic Subs is spreading love around the world one sub at a time. Voted the best in Cleveland, Dave's Cosmic Subs uses only the freshest ingredients all wrapped in the history of rock and roll. Dave's Cosmic Subs are perfect for any occasion, especially your next Spartan Athletics gathering. Visit Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry or call 216-320-0330 for delivery. There's only one legendary sub, and that's Dave's. 
Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216 707 4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. And welcome back inside Horsburg Gymnasium. 4.22 to go in the opening half. 32-23. Spartans lead by nine. Eddie, an eerily similar game to what we saw for the start of the women's game, where Case Western Reserve, the men off to a red-hot start. 13 of 26 from the floor, 6 of 13 from long range. Carnegie Mellon, on the other hand, 29.2% overall, 22.2 from long range. Yeah, we'll see if the Spartans uh, can keep this up and pull away a little bit as we end the first half, similar to the way the women did in the earlier game. They came away with a 27-point victory there. And Spartans trying to keep the momentum in their favor. Up nine. This is Newton on the inside. Into Hollis. Hollis against McNeil. Turn around. Layup is up and good. Nice job once again by Michael Hollis. That's his first point to the game. Back to an 11-point lead for Case Western Reserve. Jumper no good by McNeil. Miller with it, the ball rolls loose and possession will stay with Carnegie Mellon. They will reset to 20 on the shot clock. There you saw it on the replay. We're going, uh, Case Western Reserve is going up looking for a jump ball, but uh, the ball was not in anyone's possession there and it went out of play. Carnegie trying for a play off the inbounds, but deflected away. Case Western Reserve looking to make it a clean sweep at home to start the UA play for the men and the women. And they lead by 11 over Carnegie Mellon, finishing this first half strong. Important for the Spartans. And a layup there knocks it back to a nine point lead. Oworth has played well today. He has 11 points. 34-25 the score. Collis. Off to Fowler. Fowler into Newton. Newton back out. Vulcaning a chance at a three. Passes up to dribble in instead. Now Fowler works his way in. Nice pass off to Newton. Can't finish. The rebound tipped up in the air and finally secured by Suddeth. McNeil. Far side. Back to the top of the key now. Howarth with it. Suddeth controls. Three pointer, no. McNeil passes up, dribbles in instead. And knocked loose. Newton falls on top of it and gets it off to Vulcaning. And now the Spartans may have numbers coming down court. Quick pass off to Ionati. Step back. Three pointer on the way is good. A step around the oncoming defender and Ionati with a fast break three. 12 point lead for the Spartans, but the answer back by Howarth quiets down the crowd. He knocks down the three in response back to nine points, 37 28. That's a big three for Howarth there. Yeah, he took advantage of uh, Spartans Limit a little bit celebrating right there. That three pointer to go up 12 and nailed it. Hollis now the outside, Volkening takes it, working against McNeil, dribbling in, step back, jumper is up, no good. Newton trying to go for the rebound, and he's fouled on the way in. And they'll call it against Suddeth. And that is his first. Cole Frilling back into the game. Frilling still leading all Case Western Reserve players today with 10 points. Been out for the last few minutes. Three-pointer on the way there by Fowler, no good. Howarth, shot is no good. Fowler with another rebound and... Spartans fall. It was either a tie-up or a foul. Let's see what they called there. They do call the foul and that will go against McNeil. That's McNeil's second. That's a big loss for Carnegie Mellon, although it's only a minute 44 left in the half, but two fouls for McNeil, their floor general out there. Yeah, taking him out here. Let's see how long he stays out of the game. 
By the way, interesting to see a little bit of a smaller rotation today for Todd McGinnis as he enters conference play. Only eight players in this one so far. You see, 30th year head coach Tony Wingen watching his Tartans here. The longest tenured head coach in the UAA. I believe that's relatively new. After Mark Edwards left Wash U. Hollis kicks it out. Frilling jumper no good. And the rebound taken by Howarth, who continues to play strong. Three-pointer from the outside, and that's good. Joey Krimpa knocking it down. And all of a sudden, the game back to six, just over a minute to play here in the first half. Well, again, the way this half ends could have some significant impacts on the second half. The Spartans have been in control the entire game. I'm sure would love to get this back to a double-digit lead if they can. Big mismatch here for Hollis. He's just able to turn his way around and work his way into the post. Nice draw by Hollis. Hollis is good at recognizing those mismatches down low and uh, getting those easy buckets. Another chance for a layup and a block on the far side by Frilling. Cole Frilling showing his athleticism there gets the blind side block. We'll see if the Spartans can hold the Tartans off the board here in these last couple possessions in the half. Have a nice lead, have some momentum going into the break. Second block of the game for Frilling. 24 on the shot clock on the inbound. Pass in the interior, Suddeth working his way in. Layup is up and good as he's working against Newton. Clock still ticking and it will be shut off here. So the Spartans up six. Shot clock turned off. I imagine they'll hold for one last shot here. Good pressure being applied by Krempa. Faller just watching, now under 10 seconds left, and loses the ball off his own foot as he tries to turn around, and that's the one thing you can't do in that situation if you're Faller. So now Carnegie Mellon with the last chance opportunity. Solomon Wells will see his first action of the day as we take another look at the missing dribble there by Faller. 6.4 to knock the shot down. See what kind of play they set up. Clock moves, Krempa up court, three, takes a step back, two, jumper is blocked by Newton, keeps it in play and launches a shot last second, but it's waved off. 